man. We had a lot of right. Shooters. But that's a thing of the past now, right? Yeah, man, I know, man. It's you know, it's it, it, they pretty soon only know what snow day even means, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crazy. Just all of a sudden the world changes and it goes into I know, history. just like that, man. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, do you have a couple questions about kind of where the industry's going um, in terms of live action film? Like that might be something that's interesting to explore um, with these guys because they're usually on set. And oh, I think we're definitely going to have questions that tie the past, the present, and the future together. <laughs> where do you teach, Kevin? Uh, Kansas University. Oh, cool. Film department, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. All right, you guys are good to go. You're live all around. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the School of Animation and Visual Effects and our panel discussion. I'm very honored to be uh, speaking today with the filmmakers, the crew, and uh, all the people behind the 24th. Uh, the 24th is the incredible story the uh, based on true events of the all-black 24th United States Infantry Regiment and the Houston Riot of 1917. Directed and co-written by Academy Award winner Kevin Wilmot, co-written and starring Trey Byers, both of whom are here today. And we're also speaking to cinematographer Brett Pollock, producers Alexandra Milchen, Patrick Peach, and Tony Grazia, as well as our own faculty and Studio X leaders, Catherine Tate and Jason Patnode, and students who are uh, happily, they're now alumni, and they are Michael Rich, Ivy Yishwan. We may have Adam Liu joining with us in a moment. Um, I want to go ahead and start. I mean, everyone should go check this movie out. It is incredible. Uh, and it is based on real events. It's stuff that people probably have not heard about. E you know, even though it's a hugely important historical moment, it's not something that's taught in school. Maybe some people heard about it in a book or a podcast, but they probably had to go out of their way to find out about this. So this is a really important historical film, uh, historical fiction and based on true events. Um, Kevin, I wanted to start with you. I have to say, you know, when I was in school, your early films really kind of helped open my mind up because your work is so uh, historically conscious, socially conscious. What was really important to you in taking this uh, piece of history and making sure that you translated it to uh, a dramatic story? Well, you know, a lot of things you really just mentioned, really. I, I think... Um... The fact that, that it's, it's such an unknown piece of our history was always very important to me. Uh, you know, I really came, came about finding the story from the, the only real photograph of, of the trial. And uh, we show that photograph at the end of the film. And uh, when I saw that photograph, you know, it just kind of blew me away. Uh, you know, it, it, there's 63 black soldiers there, all in a group. Um, and white soldiers are guarding them with, you know, rifles with fixed bayonets. And, and the caption said the largest murder trial in American history. And, and, and I'd never heard anything about it before. And no one, no one I asked knew anything about it either. And it was, you know, it's just, you know, so amazing that, you know, the largest murder trial in American history that none of us know anything about. It's like, you just, you can't make that stuff up really. And uh, and then when you when you look closely at the photograph, um, especially in, in in a few years, kind of you know then when when things became digital and you can look closely at things, uh, and you saw the men's faces. And I happen to grow up in a in a town um, adjacent to Fort Riley, uh, called a little small town in Kansas called Junction City, and the Buffalo Soldiers were stationed there, and these guys were Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, the men of the 24th were Buffalo soldiers. And so when you look at the, the faces of these men, um, you know, these were guys I, I really felt like I, I knew. They were, these were guys I felt like I really grew up with really in many ways in my, my neighborhood. So uh, so all of it was made it very real to me. And then when, you know, when I learned the details about uh, the story, uh, made me want to tell it even more. And so it, it always spoke directly to me from a, from um, really just discovering that it was a real event. So I, I can pose this to everyone on the panel as well. Um, staying true to Kevin's vision, 
uh, I mean, for everyone, like, what are the things you have to keep in mind to tell a story that is obviously has, uh, you know, fictionalized elements and real life elements, um, but it's a history that it has been obscured, kind of hidden away from us. Anybody can speak to this. Well, uh, I think um, one of the big things, you know, that, that we talked about um, and, and just throughout um, was accountability. Um, this, you know, as obscure as the story is, there's also, um, <clears throat> there's also, I guess, on, on both sides of, of, of the coin, people are, are doing something against one another. You know what I mean? Whether it's retaliation or whether it's just aggravation, there's still a similar, in this particular uh, incident in history, there's uh, a similar action towards one another. And that's, that seemed really, it seemed like something that was very important to remember, a, a good reference point um, as to where, you know, we've gone in history from that point to the civil rights movement all the way to now. Um, you know, we were really, really trying to find elements of the story that were still, that had a bit of modern connotation as well to uh, not only tell the story of history, but to tell the story of us, of identity that still, you know, reads true as for, for today. Um, actually, that leads right into my next question, which is uh, for you, Trey, but anybody else also can speak to it, which is um, you stepped into the past like you had to take on a role and step onto a set and really immerse yourself in this very difficult you know intense what some of these scenes are just so heart-wrenching and so intense um you know uh how do you kind of decompress from that immersion like how do you kind of um you know how does that impact your process um, well, um, the good thing is, I, I, Kevin Wilmot allowed me to help him write on the on the screenplay, so I knew where we were going before we, you know, before we got boots to the ground. And it just—I I mean, it's a, first of all, history, uh, especially Black history, is very important to me. And to get the opportunity to tell these the story of these soldiers that are forgotten, uh, largely, um, it just—it was—it was—it was just an honor. And the more time I had, the more time I had to invest, the more time I had to, you know, dig deeper into, you know, who outside of the historical context of the story, who Boston was, you know, how close Boston was to me, and to try and again, find the line between past and present. So um, it, it was a lot of, it was a lot of digging. It, yeah, it was, you know, heart wrenching at times for me, uh, particularly seeing the men, you know, singing over there, knowing that they would never get over there. Um, you know, moments like those really stand out to me, but um, it was the, the responsibility, I think, that kept us all going. And how I decompressed, just to answer, uh, when it was over, I went to Ireland. <laughs> I drank some Guinness, man. That's what I did. <laughs> Get out of the country. Watch some plays. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is anybody else, uh, I mean, we had a lot of people kind of go uh, on set, look at, you know, and even on our team, did anybody kind of have any uh, thoughts on stepping into that world and your responsibility and your process as part of that? Well, I just wanted to say quickly, I'd love for other people to talk about it too, that, that you know, working with Trey on the script and, and then, you know, being on the set, I think we had a really kind of joyous set, you know, uh, uh, you know, Brett was such a great DP and, Everybody just, you know, Pat and Tony, um, you know, everybody just created a, a world for us to really, I think, uh, give you the freedom and, and to, to, you know, do your thing and, and, and to really, you know, uh, express yourself and, and, go, and go to those ugly places, go to those bad places uh, with the freedom to know that you can leave them afterwards. You know, I think, I think that's a, that's a big, that's a big uh, part of telling, you know, a really tough story is, is you, you, you don't want to go there and then have to stay there. <laughs> you know, you want to feel like you can, you can leave, you know, you know, as much as you can afterwards. And, 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 uh, and that has a lot to do with the set you're on. I think, I think that the vibe of the set and, 
And, you know, everybody, I think, just really worked incredibly well together. And, and I think we all got along really well. And, and that was, that was uh, I think, a big, big, big part of it. And, you know, Brett specifically, I just have to shout out my brother here. I mean, Brett was such a great work with in terms of moving, moving things forward really fast. And we had a really tight schedule. And, and you know, when you have problems like that, that's, that those things kind of, drift down and affect everything else. And, and, and so, um, you know, I think it just really came together incredibly well and, and hopefully it gave people the freedom to really do their thing. There was also accuracy on everything too, Kevin. Like when I was there um, wandering around on the set, cause I had to take a bunch of reference photos. So I would go to areas of the set when, when the crew wasn't there, like tent city when no one's in there completely accurate you know it's just like wandering around and there being the only person in there you're totally in that time period and that was um not something you see on most movie sets right so th th that was really nice that was that was cool no no doubt about it we had a, a great uh, production designer and uh you know that was that was a, a big part of you know when you have to move quickly i think mm -hmm. especially when you're on a you know fairly limited budget uh you know, if, if you don't have the world, if the world isn't right, you can't move so quickly, really. Yep, that and, is absolutely right. And, and, and that, and, you know, they just did a great job of, of, of giving us the freedom. The, that, that detail and accuracy, I think everybody involved in the film really cared a great deal about that. Mm -hmm. And they really brought their A game to it. I mean, the wardrobe and everything was just so very specific. And, and, and I think we all kind of relished the details of it. Uh, mm -hmm. which I think that's the, the fun thing about making a film like this is you gotta, you gotta kind of relish the details of it all. Yeah. Well, I know Kevin, you've described yourselves as the self as a history geek. I, I fell, I feel like a fellow history geek as well. <laughs> um, I use it for my bookcase. Uh, I did actually have a question for Brett uh, specifically for the cinematography. I mean, one thing I found really impressive um about this film even like visceral at times was how there are different genre elements blended into it and uh you know it's a it's a historical film it is a war film even though it's on american soil it's got horror elements it's got some romance elements i know um some of those things in the script tray uh came and worked on like the some of the storylines too so um but Brett, how do you how do you blend all incorporate all these different genre elements together in to tell uh, this historical story? Um, I I tend to I mean I don't really look at it as different genres. I mean it, I mean obviously there are different things within uh, any script that has different types of genres, but I kind of think of it as one one whole thing. It's really just the script that dictates kind of what what we're going for and what you're trying to do with it. Um, I mean, one thing that um, really, really early on when I was right, like before I jumped on board and I, I, I discussed with Trey and his whole, him and him and Kevin really had this perspective on it. Like they really just wanted to feel like from the beginning to the end, it just feels like a powder cake. It just feels like it builds the whole time. And that was sort of just, that was basically the whole, the whole metaphor for, for, for my decision-making, like anything that I was doing transitioning through the script um, was sort of that, that idea. So, um, you know, I just try to, you know, in a blanket, I, you know, it obviously is, is a, is a period film, um, well, you know, and it's a war film and it all, you know, like you said, I was always little, little other genres in it, but, you know, as a whole, it's, it's, it's kind of one thing really the, the subtext of the scenes really dictate those decisions to, to and um and and you know and then you know again it felt like the movie mo goes from day hot day desert you know i mean texas heat to uh, to night pouring rain so it was in the script it really i just really had to kind of follow the dots you know i really didn't it, it, it was all in there you know already so it was um a lot of so basically, you know, the decisions are made from from the script, from from the what's on the page. Uh, I just every aspect of production of this had to come together, right? Obviously, um, 
the story is incredible. Like you bringing all these different, I just love how the lighting, even like you said, it changed day to night and then definitely the more romantic scenes, uh, as opposed to anything else in the movie has to be done a certain way. Um, I know our, the producers and, uh, we introduced them, but they, maybe you can all introduce yourselves as you answer this. Um, you have some action films in your backgrounds. I went and looked it up and there definitely were action sequences in this film. Uh, and so the, for a different kind of, uh, approach, but they were still a lot of action. So I know you had to shoot, uh, in eight, was it 18 days? Yes. How do you produce a movie with so much action in 18 days that it's, it, it's it so was, impressive? It, it was 19 days. So why don't you go ahead and start us off? <laughs> <laughs> um, how to compress that kind of thing? All the, the all that into nineteen days. Well, it was, it's all in the it's all in the pre production and the cooperation of the team and mainly Kevin. <laughs> Kevin has to has the burden of trying to make that work within the schedule, and uh, he was fantastically collaborative in that manner. He made it work on every occasion. Um, you know, there was so many uh, uh, elements that had to come together in the right way. Uh, we were, we had a super short prep. So uh, we were really rushing just to get our, our tent city built in time. And everybody was so afraid we weren't going to have tents on time, but we, we made it. But, you know, by the skin of our teeth with people sewing fabric all through the weekends and and, uh, you know, the uniforms had to come from all over the place. They came from, some came from Europe and some came from collectors and some came from rental houses. And we had to wait for those to all get in and they got in right at the nick, in the nick of time. Uh, you know, it, it, when you have a super short prep, which is what we had uh, to collect all the right props, all the right, you know, vintage props and all the right vehicles, all those things, the wagons, all that stuff. You know that's how good our team was. They they were able to collect all that stuff in such a short period of time, and and bring it to us and have it have it when we needed it. We had a really great uh, group of um, uh, 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 experts, our consultants, our, our history consultants, our military consultants, and and they 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 wouldn't they didn't like the smallest detail to be off. You know, and they we would shoot something that might not be right. We have to reshoot it because if the if the wrong if they were wearing the wrong uniform or something like that, the wrong hat or the wrong band on their hat, it was it was that detailed. They were really serious about it. There were guys. Tony Tony found both of them. He was brilliant. Brought in the the uh, guy who brought all of, most of our vehicles in, and it was uh, it was it was a big team effort. Everyone loved the project so much and felt so much passion for getting it on the screen. Uh, everyone, everyone, that's everyone that joined the team was saying how proud they were to be on the movie and glad to be there. And, and that kind of energy, collective energy is what was what made it happen. And then our, our set was, we had a great assistant director team and our set was, we ran really smooth. We had great days. We, we shot everything we, we needed to shoot. And we shot more, you know, and it's great. So, you know, we, we shot the hell out of it. I'm, I'm cleaning it up for you guys, but we shot the hell out of it. And, That's the and, famous uh, Tony, Tony line. Shot, <laughs> Tony, <laughs> went, Tony, and, <laughs> Tony and Jason went off and shot uh, all the visual effects uh, plates and elements. And it was, they were fantastic. And we, we were able to really, those really came in handy, as you guys know. And then Tony shot a lot of the uh, a lot of the second unit. It was it was we for a little movie. We had a lot going on, and we pulled it off. Yeah, it, it, the challenges too is the period. Well, and also the performances. The acting was there, it was on the page, and then the acting was there. And then for us to get, as Pat was saying, the uniforms. Um, but on a small schedule and a small budget, it's so hard. It really is. Uh, to keep that authenticity. Um, but we would have the main union and we'd shoot on the side. So whenever, even the, the lead, the, the night stuff that we did, all that stuff with the gun shooting, we, the A unit was yeah. right there, right next to us. And yeah. we'd, grab extra, we'd, we'd grab the extras and shoot and, and break windows and make a lot of noise. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but there's an energy on a, on a movie like this that you don't get on the, on the I'm, on, I'm on probably the biggest movie right now 
that's shooting in the world. And it's not that camaraderie, the closeness, the uh, and the passion. Everybody on our crew really wanted to be there. There was nobody. A lot of problems. There wasn't a lot of money. People weren't making a lot of money. They were there because they wanted to tell the story and to, and, and to really tell it the correct way. And um, we had a great... We had a great general right there. Kevin was, uh, he, he knew when he didn't want to compromise. Like for instance, the, the, the scene in the courtroom, we, it was tough to find that. We finally found it. It was on the second floor, which was very interesting, but he knew how to say, okay, we're going to shoot this here. And then we could shoot that there and, and stay doing small movies. You have to stay in a, in a much more smaller footprint and not move the company and not move the circus and, and be very cost-effective time-wise. But um, I got to say, it was one of my greatest experiences in my whole career. It all gelled together. It was very tough in the beginning because we didn't even know Trey and Kevin that well, Pat and I. And, you know, we got on the ground. We had six weeks to prep the movie and get all the uniforms, get all that stuff. It was, yeah. uh, who, hey, but it was great. Uh, Tony and Pat, who found the, um, the, the base where the majority of the shooting took place? Because that was just a gem. Yep. That, that place was amazing. Our location. Our location yeah. manager. Uh, well, actually, one of our scouts. He turned okay. out to be one of our drivers, Carl. Carl Golden found it. He was the one to find it. And yeah, it was an abandoned airfield. It was an abandoned airfield. And, and I can tell you this. I think that what I noticed when I watched the movie, I felt that Trey, his character owned that. He, in every scene, you know, I saw him just taking it in and, and and sort of like really being in the moment there. It was really interesting. Everybody else followed suit. All the rest of the cast followed suit with them. It was, it was a tremendous, tremendous thing once we started shooting, that how, the, how they all, every one of their performances were just outstanding. Mm -hmm. just it's nothing amazing. like being, it's nothing like being out in the open, not on the sound stage, but in nature to really, you know, hone the performance and just feel the earth, feel the footsteps that were on, you know, that ground before you. And to literally conjure those things, conjure those spirits and use, use the world, use the elements to, you know, perform. And it, it didn't, it didn't uh, hurt that it was scorching hot <laughs> as well, you know what I mean? I mean, think about it, he, he would thought, who would have thought that North Carolina had anything on Houston, but my Lord, um yeah yeah so i can't take all the credit yeah, i appreciate all of that but you know i think nature mother nature helped us a lot too well yeah i, I just want to say real quick too that 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 you know pat mentioned the acting and, and trey and and you know everybody involved i mean you know if you if if the acting isn't great and 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 quick and strong and you know and that screws your schedule up too. I mean, you know, I, didn't, I never had to worry about any of the actors. You know, it was like, I just, I just kind of watched them be the characters. And it was, and, you know, I, I heard Robert Altman uh, say one time that, that directing is really casting. And, and you know, you, you cast the right people and then you just kind of get out of the way. And, and that's what I was able to do with, with the film was really kind of, you know, get out of the way and they just did their thing i didn't have to give you know the main notes i would have to give people was were like you know correcting them about a period thing or something you know i didn't tell anybody how to act because that's uh that's what's great about uh, when you got great actors it definitely struck me i mean i didn't actually have a lot of questions for the uh, acting because it is just so perfect like but um i did have one and that's so for you trey but you already kind of started to talk about it a little bit. You uh, said you were able to help prepare more because you did co-write the script. What was that like uh, as opposed to other jobs? Like, is it is it more helpful? Is it are there things that are more difficult? What are the things you have to put in your head when you co-wrote something and now you step into it? I, I mean, I did one thing at a time. Um, writing is so fulfilling uh, for for me, and to be able to write with Kevin, who was my screenwriting teacher. I mean, you know, he took me to school again. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's what that's what that's what teachers are for. And you know, he's such a master at at that craft. So it was, I mean, it was it was refreshing. Um I, I was shooting Empire at the time and I remember coming just, you know, taking leave from there, leaving 
that world, that character of Andre Lyon and going into 1917. I mean, it was so refreshing and heartbreaking, you know, artistically something different, but historically something so tragic and the fact that it's not well known. Um, you know, that, that I think that that process was, was enough to keep my attention. And then, you know, when it came time to act and, you know, put, try and put that away. And it was really helpful to have, a, you know, not only a great director, but a co-writer and Kevin that, you know, would make the changes that needed to be made. And I, I didn't necessarily have to leave the role of Boston often to, to, to help problem solve, you know what I mean? Because, of, because he had the reins on that. So yeah, when I did one thing at a time and, you know, it, it's, it, I felt like it serviced me to um, be able to wear different hats, but know when, you know, that particular position was needed. And it also, you know, helped with the, with the performance because I had years of prep, <laughs> you know? Do you see more writing in no. your future? Absolutely. As, as all, listen, as many, as many opportunities as I get to write and, and many people tell me, yes, I'll write until, it's, until I'm done. <laughs> yeah. It was not as easy as anybody makes it sound, guys. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I will, uh, I will tell uh, nothing but the truth. It was a miracle. And those guys pulled a miracle. Uh, we had no time, no money, and uh, really no time. And this prep was done so fast. And if it wasn't for Kevin and Trey, who were um, not only created this world in an incredible script, but willing to adjust at all time because we had to adjust for the terrain, for what was available to us and really make a miracle. And if it wasn't for the crew and all the cast that came on purely out of love because until the last minute, we didn't even know if we had financing and we started prepping, really hoping everything will come together. And uh, we had someone called Jordan Fachu put it together and then Pat and Tony uh, put together this incredible crew, the tax credit. I mean, there's so much behind movies, uh, behind the screen that has to be put together. It's a perfect storm. And if it doesn't happen exactly right on time and perfectly, it just can't happen from the bone to, um, you know, really a crazy schedule. And I'm gonna say this because you guys are all on, uh, Pat and Tony was like, don't worry, we'll get the VFX, it'll look great. And we were terrified. We were like, there's no way. <laughs> there is no way they can deliver that many shots. We're going to use students? <laughs> there's no way. And we kept seeing different students showing up. And it was terrifying to me, at least. And um, it was amazing because everybody was so disciplined, so passionate, so organized. Mm -hmm. I've never seen shot list respected the way... They were. I've never seen a crew move so fast, so determined. It was it was really beautiful. And we were not, you know, we were in North Carolina making this movie, um, which is also quite, uh, you know, surprising. And it was it was very powerful in so many ways. So um, it's it's it will stay with me forever. It's it's you know from our composer. Really, everybody who came on was came for, because of a passionate need to make this movie. And I think that's why it worked. I really do. Uh, Alexander, you... Oh, I was just going to say, say real quick, Alexander, yeah, if I could real quick. You know, Alexandra and you know, Trey and I, um, you know, it was Alexandra that, that you know, from the very early on, she she loved what we were trying to do. And, and we, you know, we have to give her the credit she deserves. I mean, we wouldn't be here talking to you now who are Alexandra, so, so, you know, thank you. I don't think we never oh, thank you, Kevin. Like we should have, you know, but uh, thank you, Alexandra. Uh, you know, uh, you, you. Alexandra, you anticipated my next question, which was, or my next uh, topic, which is uh, the visual effects. We're here at the School of Visual Effects Animation. Um, so you had uh, Jason on set. I know Catherine visited the set and you had students on set. So you told me a little bit about how eh, there's maybe some trepidation about that. But um, Jason and some of you, uh, tell me about that experience of being like 
that working relationship? How did how did you prove yourselves? <laughs> um, Catherine, you want to answer first? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is Catherine still there? Can she hear? Um, you're muted, Catherine. Catherine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, we had worked with Pat and Tony before, and and this is a program that the Studio X program that's been around for over 10 years. Um, you know, I saw it as something, you know, I, my mission statement was to connect um, students uh, with filmmakers, independent filmmakers, filmmakers that needed our help so that um, we could have sort of a barter system of, you know, the students don't have to act or shoot or, or do all the things that they're not coming to learn, they're coming to learn a specific craft. So we could actually give them professional footage and, and you know, professionally shot footage that is of high quality and they can focus on what they do. So I guess I could, I would say that, you know, the organization of the filmmakers of you guys uh, and, you know, the fact that we were able to go on set and uh, made the experience a lot more smooth and um, I would say uh, the students are have so much passion for the work, and it's it's just works. I don't. I'm I, I still am absolutely amazed every time we do a, a film and and how how we produce this professional level work out of students. And um, you know we have a formula I think that works really well. So um, I. And being involved from the very beginning, um, you know, before we sh even shot, I went there actually for location um, scouting and, and it was brilliant because I was able to, to actually get context and ahead of time. And, and then when Jason was on set, I felt like we were really aligned and worked as efficiently as we possibly could. And having the students on set is such an incredible experience for them because they never would get an opportunity to be on such a professional operation, you know, and actually get a perspective from the production point of view rather than just the post-production point of view. And by the way, I will just say for the fun, again, the scary part, the ones who started are not the ones who finished because as Pat suddenly told me, they had graduated. And that was another <laughs> panic moment. We we're like, what? <laughs> I that's, don't that's understand how we, we I mean, anyway. we're, this is always a problem and it's actually, we're, yeah. we're not like a studio because we have all these challenges and, and that we have to deal with like that, like having a rolling crew. So I think we are able to do it because that's how we always have to operate. And, um, and it's challenging because, um, and, but it's also part of the learning experience because in post-production, you know, some, sometimes you have to pass off work to other artists and, and that's part of the learning experience of it. So yeah. being able to handle all the things that could possibly happen and have another artist pick it up, you know, we have to be super efficient in the way we approach it. Our, our classes, we, it's a class-based studio. So um, there are mentors and we have several classes in different disciplines and we're there right to the end and we're delivering work you know, right there with them. And we're making sure that it's, you know, getting the stamp of approval in terms of how professional it is. So, uh, you know, it's not easy. I mean, I think Jason and I and Sasha, who's not, I, th I don't know if she's here or not, but she's our supervising producer. Yeah, you know, we, oh, hey, <laughs> we put a lot of, of extra time and passion. I'm the director of the department as well. So I have a whole other, I have many other hats to wear as does everyone else. We all teach regular classes too and, and um, deal with MFA, you know, graduate students and, and undergrad. And so we, but, you know, I think that, that we're kind of, I would say just we're guardians of this program and we built it from the ground up. And um, so, you know, we feel that, you know, with the passion of the students together, we're, we're really in alignment and, and we just make it work however we can. And, they did incredible work, incredible, seamless, and so, so kind and so available to all of us always. So thank you so much. Incredible. Yeah, you know, I have, fun. To, you know I have to say that the, the story that, that um, you know, uh, when we first started talking about using the school and and we had so many detailed effects that we, we're going to start laughing here in a minute, I know. 
Uh, there were so many d- detailed effects that that was required because even, even with finding you know great location and having you know a lot of good period stuff, there were just so many things that were out of period, and 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 that's that's the thing that I think we all were kind of just panic paranoid you know frightened to death about. You know, can can we can we can we correct all of these things that are going to be out of period? And most of them were small things. I mean, we we worked really hard to try to find locations that the big things were right, but there were so many wires and this and you know the cars and you know all the kind of stuff that that you know that there's just a thousand of those things. And and, and so, you know, and I, you know, I'm a professor and, you know, I work with students all the time too. And, and students can be really great and students can let you down sometimes. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, we go through all that too. <laughs> yeah, um, but we never we, saw it because I remember telling <laughs> Kevin, and Kevin goes, I know students. <laughs> I remember him saying that to me. And I said, no, 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 this is different. These are graduate students, much different. No, actually, yeah, we have undergrads. We have undergrads, yes, too. I, but, but I know that I, I told you, him that, though. We have, we have Ivy and Michael. Maybe um, you guys can talk about what your experience was like and what, what challenges you faced. Well, uh, you know, I mean, as a student, it's always great to be able to work on any film. You know, something that wasn't just something you cooked up in a back room and that you put together in your garage. To, to be able to work on a real film was, is a, a treat. But, you know, to work on a film of this caliber with this level of gravitas and, and this much potential to make a difference, you know, that's, that was a real career changing, almost a life changing opportunity. Um, you know, so I think for at least for most of us that had the chance to work on the film, you know, we were super excited. It was, you know, you, you kind of you pushed your other classes. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to admit this, Catherine. You pushed your other classes out of the way wherever you could so that you could squeeze in a little more time to work on the film. Um, and uh, it was scary, though. You know, I mean, as a student where you're you're learning a new skill and you know, this is real world stuff. This is, this is big time filmmaking. And uh, to think you're looking, you're looking at this shot and thinking I'm supposed to do what and how? And, <laughs> but luckily we had some, uh, some great expert guides on our team there to kind of help us, uh, help us find the best path fast so that we weren't, you know, trial and erroring our way all the way to the finish line. So so we were grateful for that, but boy, what a what an exciting treat to be able to be a part of it, though. Michael, I have to Michael mention. Did. I have to mention. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just want to know you. You did you you were the lead compositor, so you did most of, like the tent shots. Were all the um, tent shots you? I helped supervise the tent shots. the The work I did was the the opening sequence with the the crane camera oh, yeah. sure. on the on that nice windy day the, that, was, that was exciting yeah. the camera shook an awful lot but uh but uh yeah re uh kevin was talking about this the need to recreate the detail or to remove yeah this shot to uh remove things that aren't supposed to be there it can it can be tricky at times so there's a yeah there's a whole fence off to the left yeah um uh, that Catherine, Catherine encouraged us to be on the on a shaky crane. She wanted to have a shaky shot so you guys could actually learn how to fix that. Well, that, that, that was I, I'm not joking. Incidentally, I promise I'm not joking. <laughs> she said it'd be really great if it does move. <laughs> well, we have a variety of students, and you know the students take the classes uh, for several semesters sometimes. So. Um, we like to have a variety of complexity of the work. So, you know, generally most shots aren't just locked off without camera move. Um, uh, so we like to, to get something really beefy for some of our senior students who need a little more complexity in the work. And so, you know, it's funny with the lower budget films, the, the thing that's always um, apparent is that, uh, you know, we'll shoot it locked off and it'll be really easy or it'll be much easier. And then I'm just thinking, well, well, we don't necessarily want that all the time. And we want to have shots that can really demonstrate the skills of our students to do complex work as well. Wow. 
I mean, I'll say, I'll say one thing to that, to that note. Um, in all, uh, at any point during any, anytime you start talking about the effects of anything, it's a slippery slope because um, it can get really out of hand very quickly. Okay. And especially on something of this size, um, it being such a small film and such a fast schedule with period aspects to it that, you know, uh, don't either don't exist or can't be there. Um, you know, that list can compile really quickly. And it certainly did on this one as well, mm -hmm. when you're standing there and you're actually looking and in the middle of the street, or, I mean, it's funny talking about the airfield, like the airfield that we shot at, um, that was the 10 city, you probably only see 25% of that actual location. We didn't even, we couldn't shoot a lot of it because a lot of it was used for actually just production purposes. Um, yeah. And we, and a lot of it, like the fence that you saw on the left of screen and, um, you know, that was all we could use of that little, that little space of them come, you know, entering to the very first shot of the film, like walking up and that fence, like we couldn't even frame out that fence. It had to be sort of a VFX shot. Um, and to the point of the, uh, you know, the camera being up there on a crane, um, it wasn't even a crane, you know, we had to get a scissor lift um, to be able to, to accomplish that shot to get that higher mm -hmm. angle. And it's not perfect. Like that's not the perfect ideal thing to get that shot um, on this budget for, you know, certainly, but also like on any budget, you're never gonna have a, a perfect, you know, unless you're on a green screen stage and you're every, every shot is very much about the effects. But a lot of times what you're doing and you know, what you go into in terms of the effects is uh, helping fix a problem that wasn't anticipated. Um, and to and to so to work with that sort of footage, I think is is actually more real world than if every shot was locked up. To your point, like not every shot's going to be locked up. If mostly ninety percent of the shots won't be locked up, they won't be. They were never anticipated as being a VFX shot. Um, so I think that having the ability to work with this real footage um, definitely is is a is a huge help for for learning because. Uh, it's 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 a little more accurate to what you'll be walking into um, on any project. I feel like the crew was also yeah. like when I got out there, the crew was very open for me, kind of mixing with everybody, like checking to see to make sure certain things could be removed if they had to be, or possibly even reframing some shots if there was some weird stuff that couldn't be removed. You know, that that was one of the great things about being out there is is. It was a smaller set, smaller crew, you know, smaller budget, but everyone was very open to the VFX side because on some sometimes you'll work on a movie and people just won't understand what that is and won't understand that this stuff has to be passed off and moved down the line. So that was that made things a lot easier, a lot smoother in the transition too. For sure. Hey Ivy, did we, you want to mention we, something, Ivy, about your work on the film? Are you there? Yes, hi. Um, hi. My work is mostly like for the tent shot. I um, expand the tent about like eight, eight to ten tent <laughs> in my shot. So that's most of my work. And then it's just really fun to like just just try on different lighting and then try to make everything together. Yeah. So and then I think it's my first film. Really exciting. <laughs> To work on. <laughs> you, did, you, did, you did a great job. You did a Amazing. Great job. Awesome. And we, I remember many, many nights at about 11 o'clock in the evening sending um, back and forth. Uh, Kevin and, and, and I were going back and forth dictating to you guys about how to clean up certain things. And could you add more tents? Could you add yeah, more tents, please? Yeah, yeah. We kept that. adding tents, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, I've, I've got to say that that I just want to thank all of you guys. I mean, it's it's a miracle what you guys did. <laughs> it, it was just a mind blowing, seamless look to the film. I mean, I, I knew it was going to be good. I knew, you know, I, from the things I saw you guys doing for us, you know, I, I saw it was going to be fine. But but the but the final prod, product you know, product was just, you know, 
excellent. And, um, and, you know, I know how it works to students and you're, you know, you don't get to just sit there for 12 hours a day and, and do it like a job. You've got to do it when you can and, and you're doing it in class and you're jumping around and you're bouncing around and, and you, you know, so I, I that's what makes it such a great uh, and beautiful thing that, that you guys gave us for the film. It's, 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 I know it's not easy to do. There were some some big surprises too. Like when Tony and I got out to the farm to shoot the splinter unit stuff, the, the farm ha had decided to pave that road and put a bunch of outhouses in the background. I, I know. <laughs> we're just like, okay, that's that's a little extra stuff we have to take care of now. But and I, so I, much. I, yep. Sorry, Alexandra. No, I was going to say what was really amazing, and and we've all worked on many big VFX movies and you know you get a lot of time to prep it. and so producers directors the effects teams know very well what they're getting into and you know very well normally on set what's gonna happen when you put a green screen everybody was ha everything was happening as we were shooting and it was that's the miracle and what you're talking about is really what's happening, which is very rare. It was an incredible generosity from all the VFX team, as well as everybody on set to try to collaborate and to understand what Kevin wanted to do, what the resources were allowing us to do. We thought we were going to be able to make more tents than we did, to be honest. And... And, and the list kept growing to a point that was exponentially scary. And you not only delivered on time, on budget, beyond expectations, but it was the quality of the work and specifically in period piece. And Brett is right because already, Brett, you, you delivered a scope to the movie that was a miracle. And it was kept the consistency and the creative... Uh, beauty and intensity and it felt raw but it was it, it was really really beautiful on this movie to see how everybody worked together and found solutions as we were going um because it it, it really we were constantly adjusting to make the day so it's all to kevin and trey it starts with the script so many times um i had to go back to kevin and 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 thinking he was going to no way and every time he found solutions creatively first in the script and then the whole team found it on set and that was incredible well the calmness too of brett too uh and ed like the controlled chaos that we had when we were doing the tents you guys were shooting in the tent in the one man, main tent and we were doing the crane stuff like a color form set jason and i were coordinating courses and cars and troops and you guys are doing a scene that you were like walk over calmly it was good i remember michael t standing there going I see what you're doing. You guys are doing good, you know, because he's a director too. And he's like, it was pretty, it was pretty wild. It was like a controlled chaos, like an orchestra. It was a lot of fun those days when it worked like so well. It was fun. But I think so, it was real, I think it was really helpful that that um that you know Michael and and uh, Catherine and you know that they came to the set. Uh, I think I think that was you know, I think that just really helped uh, them understand probably what we were trying to do. And so when you guys, you know, went back home, um, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, you know, some big mystery about how this production was going. I, I think that was, I think that would really saved us, uh, uh, you know, and that, I know that Pat was the one that really kind of said we needed to do that, Pat and Tony. And, and I think that was, was the key to, you know, to, you know, connecting the the, the post-production, all that post-production work to the production itself. And I think that was, that was really critical. I also have to mention yeah. that, that the, just being there and then watching the film just personally and just seeing all the locations that I went with, you know, went to with you. Yes. Um, I don't know why it was just so, so wonderful to be part of that process from the beginning and see the finished product and, um, and I, I just thought I, it was just a very special experience that I'm really glad I got to have. And it also let, let us know, okay, let's get started on the gate shot. 
we can do some prep and R and D while we're there. And then Jason's sending tent pieces over and, and we're all just kind of like getting a head start, knowing that it's going to get really, really busy in a, in a couple months. So we were able to do some of the complex R and D work ahead of time. Um, and, and that was because you allowed us to be part of the process early. And, and know, also the little normal. details too, like even Jason, we, and this was even hindering production. We were doing muzzle flashes on one mm -hmm. morning and interrupting scene or afternoon. But I mean, yeah. all those little things are unique and they're perfect for what we were doing. And Jason shooting fabric. And I mean, he was in one of the buildings for days shooting little pieces that we would get him, you know, yeah, right. whatever it was. And uh, yeah. it was, it was, it was, but, I mean, that's, it was fun. Those things are important. That, and, and, and that's really the way it's, it normally does work is we have our visual effects team with us in prep and on the set. But, and I know that's not how you guys always work. And when we did the architect um, a few years back, you didn't come to the set and it was sort of like we got to have we you did, we did we yeah. did we did come to set well a bit. i met I, I, oh before you mean Not, before yeah 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 it wasn't yeah. The, yeah wasn't <laughs> the same wasn't the same this you know, this was a lot more intense on. yeah and i knew that plus you have the sessions you know that you only work in session and i i was very concerned about getting you guys going in june as soon as possible on the on the main shots and uh, because I knew that it was going to jam up later. And you guys just, I still can't believe how, how well, and by the way, the fact that you only work in session, uh, like I said earlier, it was 11 o'clock at night, many nights approving shots and people were responding. So I, I don't yeah. know what, how that fits into session. Well, Sasha could you probably guys speak were, to you that. You were totally available. Sasha could speak hey, to that actually hey, because- Kat, What happened to that cow that we ordered in that box? <laughs> It went back. Oh, it went <laughs> back. Okay. I just wanted to it mention worked, though. It was funny when it got there. It didn't look so good, right? Trey, I remember you were looking at it, going, "That's that's the that's the cow," you know. And we put the horns on, and it looked yeah, pretty good. Yeah. It's an I'm illusion. Starting to, I'm starting to see some questions popping up in the chat from from our our um, visitors. Um, are we? Are we going to wait for that or do we want yeah, to? Yeah, actually, I want to let people know there are a couple people who've asked questions, but if you guys want to start putting questions, I don't know where I'm pointing, in the chat, um, you go ahead and then I will make sure to uh, relay those um, uh, at the end here. But I did have a question because we started to go towards it and it is, I mean, we now we know how much energy and how uh, how demanding like the set was like just on that timeline. Um, but let us let me ask about post-production. So um, Sasha is here with us and also... Uh, Catherine can speak to this too, but what was the feeling with all the stuff you were getting uh, so quickly and on such a, on, with these deadlines? And tell me about some of the stuff with post-production. Yeah, so, um, well, one is that I know um, Pat and um, Tony from The Architect, so um, we have a really good re working relationship and they knew what us and, um, and Pat knows that I'm a straight shooter and I'm very transparent and I will tell them the ugly truth about production and what we can and can't do. And I, I hope that they appreciate that. And then Kevin, I know you were kind of, you know, getting it probably, you know, filtered from Pat. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that is the probably the most, the single most important thing about this film for us is that we knew from the beginning, Kevin, that this was an important film and Trey too. We knew that this wasn't going to be an important film. And, and it's funny thinking where we are now at how really important it is. Um, and so we, we really wanted to do our best, but I also needed to be really honest with kind of what we can and can't do. And so I know we started out with probably like 150 shots and you guys wanted it in a like I don't know, 10 weeks. And I was like, ah. <laughs> but what we did do is that, you know, we took some of these really important shots and, and I want to talk about the courtroom scene because it was only nine shots. And I know you guys were struggling with the location. Um, and so we were doing the green screen extension. We were really cleaning it up, making sure that it was getting in that, that period piece. But for us, you know, as storytellers as well, is it was really important to, even with the artists, with the student artists, to let them know, like, this is a pivotal scene in the film. This is really, really important. And it's important that these visual effects are seamless 
so that no one is distracted by a bad mat and no one's distracted by bad roto or like a weird um, map painting behind because we need to keep them within the drama and the story that was unfolding in that scene. And so, um, and I knew it was really important. And I think Catherine and Mike, you can probably remember that day. I mean, you were online and Ivy was there and I was like, okay, like we took five guys from that for those nine shots. We took five guys that were, you know, Ivy was like full up on the tents. Matt, uh, Mike was on the the crew the the troops and I, we we took a a super duper team of five guys and I brought them all together and I was like you guys this is important man <laughs> they, I think they're really important shots like I hope we can get them done like we have a really short deadline but I need you guys to work really really closely so that we can nail this and make it really beautiful. And it was great because they were kind of like, okay, okay. And then, and then they're like, yeah, we can do it. And, and they went off and they did it. And I'm just like that, that scene, that sequence, those shots, um, I think we pulled them off and I really feel like you don't get pulled out. I mean, I know where all the stuff is and i mean, you guys do too, but I feel like when we watch that, that sequence now, you don't get pulled out of the drama. I think that that's really part of our whole mission statement is, you know, we do seek out projects that have some sort of something important to say. And, and, the, and the work we, we do is not, you know, like Transformers and Avengers where like the visual effects are in your face. Like it, it, what I love about the films that we work on is that we really are helping you tell the story. We give the students contextual, uh, they see the context of their work and they see the sequences they work on together. And that's the most powerful part of this program is that, you know, and, and they all want to work on Marvel films. I mean, let's be real, right? But they will, and they do. And I think they'll actually look back and realize the importance of the work that we're trying to do and the films we're trying to work on and, and to work with people like you um, and just tell, just let the storytelling process go forward. I, I was going to say, I, I think that's one of the most important lessons to learn for visual effects is that visual effects is always in service to the story. When the visual effects start to steal the stage, you've ruined a movie. And you know that is just so critical. Um, and, and I'm, it, it was amazing to see it come together the way it did. I, I was just so glad I got to do it. And I just I, wanna mention Michael though. I mean, let's, let's be transparent. I mean, Michael came to our program and he was a lighter at Industrial Light and Magic for many, many years. So I was so flattered that he wanted to to learn compositing um, from us. And um, so he's been through production and, um, you know, but still he, you know, you appreciate the difference of working in sort of an assembly line like visual effects studio, which has its benefits, but, you know, being able to be more connected with the filmmakers and, and um, Michael was also an online student. So we were doing Zoom, like Sasha, you know, she's an online filmmaker and she brought Zoom into our, our pipeline like years ago. So um, we feel like this whole environment is really easy to work, you know, when we got went through this, this, this year, this crazy year, um, I think we transitioned really we're even better, I think, in some ways that, that we're working like this. Um, we're in our element and working remotely. We still are making sure that we're communicating. Sasha has a film that she made um, that is beautiful and she did it all online. I don't know, Sasha, if you want to say anything about it. I'd like so, to just talk about their film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll keep it to that. Well, no, thing. I mean, just Thank the you. online process that, that, that you know, that's that's what I mean. No, you don't want to? Okay, fine. So I, I did have a <laughs> question, though, um, because it's something you mentioned, Catherine. So I'll just stick on the Studio X thing for just another moment. Okay. I know we have a lot of people who are interested in Studio X, so I will ask this. Uh, we know now the process of the students coming on set and even after the set and communicating back and forth and kind of proving that this, uh, but how do you go about, you, you touched on a little bit, how do you go about picking which projects are appropriate for Studio X? Um, well, uh, we've been really lucky. Um, and we, we, we've had five films that we worked on in Sundance. Um, we worked on a film called Beasts of the Southern Wild that was an indie film 
um, that got nominated for four Academy Awards. We worked with Ryan Coogler. We were on set for Fruitvale Station when he, it was his first feature. And, um, and then obviously we know what happened to his career. Um, so we've been lucky, but I think that um, it's just been years of networking and word of mouth. Um, people uh, seek us out actually and find us in the strangest places. We've had a few articles, we had a Wall Street Journal article. And, and I just wanna mention though, when Sasha came in, um, it was kind of wild, wild west. Uh, you know, we were working intercessions, we were working Christmas day and we were working New Year's Eve and birthdays. And, you know, we needed to actually, cause we started to grow so fast that, that it was getting out of control. So, I mean, I think that, that Sasha coming in and bringing some, some, uh, I guess, y uh, yang to my yin or, or I don't know, just bringing in some structure, um, and some boundaries, um, have, have really changed things. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I have a question then for everyone because it would apply to all of your roles, but I think it's going to probably go back to the script and be more uh, something Kevin and Trey can speak to first. It um, always goes to the script. It always goes to the script. I mean, the story, as as our visual effects people say, and I'm so glad they all know this so intrinsically, yeah, it it has to be the story that takes uh, center stage. But, um, you know, I picked up this, speaking of stories and narratives, I picked up this really important theme from it that, um, you know, we're all the product of stories and there are people in the script, in, in their characters who are being defined. Like they don't necessarily, they're trying to define themselves, but society or other groups want to define their story or who they are for them. So, uh, Kevin, I'll start with you since you've worked on historical drama, biopics, documentaries, even alternate reality uh, stories. What is the responsibility that creators have in representing these kind of narratives that have uh, struggle to them and have these kind of nuance to them? Well, you know, there's a big responsibility there. And um, you first off, when you're dealing with history, you want to be responsible to the people you're representing. Um, you want, you know, Trey and I worked really hard to not make choices that were not based in some kind of connection to reality, to the, to the real story. You know, we, you know, obviously it's a drama. We have to, you know, it's a movie. We've got to entertain folks, but we, we didn't, we didn't want to just do anything we just want to do. I mean, we always went back to the, the reality of the story as much as we could to pull choices from, um, and I, I think then the other thing is that, you know, you, you're also responsible for the, the message that, that is coming out of this. And, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, I love what Sasha and, 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 you know, Michael and Catherine was saying about, you know, all of this, because if, like in the courtroom scene, if, if those effects aren't great, then you're not going to be, you're going to be distracted from Trey. You know, and 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 this is Trey's moment in the movie, and and you know, and it's the moment, it's the message of the film, and it's the everything's relying upon this scene not being distracting. And and I tell my students all the time, you know, once the audience leaves the film, you don't get them back. Once once something pulls you out of the movie, it's you're you're done. It's done. You can't really get them back. I mean, they, they come back to the movie, but they're not the same when they come back. And and so, you know, so it's the combination of all those things th that really make, make it successful, you know, make, make, make it work. You know, it's interesting um, from, from my perspective, uh, outside of everything that, that Kevin just said beautifully, um, being an actor as well and the kind of actor you choose to be is up to you. Um, for me in particular, uh, no matter who I'm playing, it's important to get down to the core of the identity. And that's not without struggle. So much like everybody in the world, you know, whether they're, you know, historical or, or you know, fictitious at the end of the day, uh, non -fic fiction, nonfiction at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're growing through something and you're growing to something. 
And I, and as an actor, it's much more visceral because I'm in action versus writing it down. And, and for me, um, because it's so important that the, that the character uh, grow through their fear or face their fear or face, you know, whatever moment stands between them and, you know, their best self or their worst self. Um, it, it just, it's, it's really important to be as honest as possible in the whittling away and the, 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 you know, what, what does this person need to say? How does he need to say it? Does he just say it or does he, you know, kind of beat around the bush? Does he, is he a, is he a physical person? You know, who, who does he need to say it to? And, you know, I, I think all of those elements as well from the actor's perspective um, help me in, in kind of mining for the gold, um, for my part anyway, in, in, the, in the script as we were, you know, expanding the stories of, of some of the characters. So, you know, the, the acting background helped me a lot, uh, helps me to remember the importance of it because I'm gonna have to do it. <laughs> you know, you wanna help yourself out as much as possible, but you also wanna be as honest as possible. Um, yeah. How about in any other roles? I mean, this was a story obviously that has great uh, importance for what's going on today. Just in anyone's role as, you know, producer, cinematographer, what were some of the things that if you work on this film or a project like that, what are some things that filmmakers should uh, keep in mind to um, honor the kind of sensitive nature of what's being told? I mean, it's, you know, you have to hire the right people to, to bring all those elements uh, and be able to have the talent to do that. When we looked at a lot of uh, different cameramen and we chose Brett because of his work and his, and, and his attitude and, and everything about him fit. Um, and uh, same thing with the, with the production designer and same thing with our costume designer. I mean, our costume designer did several films in the same genre, same, same era. And he, he nailed it because he knew, he knew already, he knew the story. Uh, he was one of the only people that, that we talked to who actually knew the story already and had read a book about it. So um, if you find the right people, they're going to help do all that work and help you be honest and, and tell the truth about what you're doing. Um, they, they wouldn't want, Jonathan, our production designer, he was asked to do something um, with a, a, a material. He, he came in with the budget and we you always have problems with production designers and their budgets because they always want to build everything and make everything is that it's always going to be a battle. But in his case, uh, one thing he, we were talking about the tents and he refused to make them out of any other material than they would have been made out of. He wanted them to be authentic. And he yeah, said, I remember that, you, yeah. can't, you, you can't make them out of anything, but the material that they would have been made out of. And everyone will see that and they'll know it. And particularly those who really care about it. And it just, that kind of authenticity, you know, was carried out throughout the entire art department and it shows up on the film. So, I mean, the responsibility is to try to bring those kind of people. You, you bring someone who doesn't have that experience, they may not have the ability to bring that detail and that would be, that wouldn't be as synergistic. And it's, uh, and it seems like everybody on this film did care, even the people that you don't know, but you guys do know, even Red Thread and Jeff Ertz, who, you know, was very seamless with all of the deadlines and the problems and putting it together, trying to fit it all together. And um, we were lucky. I mean, I think, honestly, this post-production party, doing it in New York, I thought it really worked out well, you know? We were lucky because it was family. My sister was I part agree. of it, so it was good. <laughs> right, I know, Alexander. You weren't no, sure by the way, I want you, got there, you know. Yeah. No, I want to say that as well because it, it's not a post-production house that normally handles that many movies. Uh, right. It's not what they do, and again, it was very worrisome. And um, but we took a leap of faith again because passion spoke for it. Tony, um, I knew it would, would protect us, take care of it, oversee it. And it was an incredible experience. Again, um, it was 24-7. It was incredible dedication 
incredible team and a speed of and and an incredible facility honestly you know i work with a lot of big studios and and i know pat and tony too and we have it's hard to get the studios or the big budget uh financers to deviate from what they know and the same old same team so it was really refreshing that we were encouraged and pushed to take risks and if it wasn't for pat Pat and Tony both saying, don't worry, just jump in us. We'll, we'll swim. I was like, we got to drown. They're like, we'll, we'll survive. Well, and it was fun because we were all in it together. And it was a big family. As Kevin said, it was the, the pain and in emotionally what the, what the actors all brought to the set. They were so prepared. They were so passionate. There was such an amazing, not only brotherhood between the actors, but what Asia and Naomi King brought to the set as well, the purity, the romance. Uh, Trey brought, you know, Brandy's sister. There was so much love around to everybody went above what their uh, title, if you want, or what their job was supposed to be. And everybody helped in every department where they could. So that's what was so great. Like when we need second unit, Tony jumped in right away. It was, it was just so great um, to see you know, all of it coming together. It was fun. I, mean, I miss it. We all miss it. Was, it was fun. I remember one Sunday, Trey was practicing the dancing in the parking lot of the hotel. <laughs> I, you, you know, I mean, it was just like every minute was being used. And it was all those little things made it such a big difference. That seemed, you know, I, I remember, Trey, you were really, really immersing yourself. You were concerned about that. And it was okay. great. You I'll know, best I could. You know, I, I, I don't have the best dancing legs. <laughs> well, I gotta you say, I gotta say, that's a there's another element is that the choreographer, she right. really did a great job. And and I don't know if in some in one of the reviews, one of the reviewers pointed that scene out and talked about yeah. how great it was in the movie. And and it is a great scene in the movie. And the um, and that was a um, uh, the, the choreographer gave us all these different pieces to, to look at. She did that remote. You guys chose the right one. And it turned out to be a, it's a really lovely scene amidst this incredibly painful film. And it's full of visual effect shots. That, That's <laughs> right. right. It is. Stuff we had right. to remove, which is, I want to shout out David Prendel, who did the shots you guys didn't do. He did a lot of the, the little smaller shots, the removals and and uh, wire removals and things like that. You guys did the big composite shots and the 3D shots because we get, we came up with a 213 uh, shot list and you said, hey, we only worked so long. We gotta, we gotta whittle it down. You guys ended up doing the 30, 33 most co complex shots and they're the big shots in the film anyway. The only one that I would say that you didn't do, which, which was a simple composite that that David came up with in the end was he took our, our, our main street Houston that we kind of tried to do and he added signage and put up a, uh, a cityscape and a faded atmospheric cityscape to the background and that shot now just really sings and it's beautiful and yeah, it, it, is, it, 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 it was it was a cool shot yeah and that came in he did that in the 11th hour that was like one of the last shots he did uh, wow. it was really great and So uh, yeah. before I was, I have some questions from the audience now, if you guys are ready, we can use some of our time for that. Um, and I see some of you have been answering them, so that's cool. Uh, I like this one because it's from a fellow editor. So I'm gonna of course go with that one first. Uh, I'm an editor, so I want to ask about how uh, the VFX department communicates with the editor. Now it's a lot of times it's through producers or even to the director. So maybe you guys can speak to that while the editing is happening and, and the shots are happening. How does that look? Well, I, I know that uh, during the editing process, there were things that we discovered that that I didn't even notice before. You know, additional special effects needs that we, we had not even noticed. Really. You know, deep background things that we saw in the shot that I didn't see on the set for, you know, for whatever reason. And um, so that was a big one. I mean, there's a lot of little discoveries you make in the editing process that really we had to send all of that new, uh, you know, those new needs, those new requirements, additions to uh, to the special effects 
folks. And, and, you know, and that was already on top of a list that was way too damn long. <laughs> you know? so, right. so, so, you know, uh, so we just kept adding and here's some more for you, you know? So it was, it was, uh, you know, I, and, and, you know, again, they just did such a great job of, of, of not freaking out with all this additional discoveries that we would make. And I think that's a big part of the editing process when it comes to special effects is that you, 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 you find, you find, you know, required things. And then you also discover things that would be great if you can do them. You discover things, oh, wouldn't this be great if we did this? Wouldn't this be great if we, you know, this would be a nice addition here. And, and um, so that, and they did all of it. They did. We have a special category for that, Kevin. It's called CBB. <laughs> what, what do you could guys call better. that? Yeah, CBB. Could be better. <laughs> it's called Kill the Damn Director, right? <laughs> I also want to mention, uh, and maybe Sasha could speak more to this, but um, you know, we do need to have a, a relationship with the editor because we have to have our parts of the film cut in properly to the rest of the film. So uh, it's we, we always like to have um, uh, access to the, to the editor before we get the work in and during the work and after. Sometimes we'll do testing with the editor to, to make sure yeah. our shots are okay. And, and, and there's a lot of tech, technical stuff that happens when you're pulling stuff into a VFX pipeline and out and we just have to make sure it's seamless. So um, it's a very important relationship for us. Relationship for us. I mean, the biggest, the biggest issue I would say is, you know, until the very last minute, you don't know what scenes are going to stay in the movie because there's many different cuts. And so you don't want the time, the money, you don't want the, you know, you want all the energy spent on shots that ultimately you're not going to use. So it's the balance that communication is very important because it obviously starts with the director and the editor, and then the producers and the financer, and everybody has to be in sync at all time. Um, but it really starts obviously with the director making sure that his vision is protected, that the scenes or shots he wants are there, and us producers making sure that we can um, deliver it all in the time frame that we have to deliver the movie, but also in a running time that doesn't exceed two hours, there's a lot at stake, so it's uh, it's a really complicated uh, game of uh, of balancing speed, making sure effects are still moving forward, and yet knowing you're going to lose a lot of them. Yeah, and the post supervisor is important. They're like the in, in between person that was juggling everything too. Um, but it was great, especially the time. We had we had a good editing team, and they all were very communicative. But the assistant editors do a lot of that connection with the uh, effects house because they have to deliver you the materials and get you the files you need. And they're the ones who end up giving it back and putting it in. And... Yeah, we're in constant yeah, it was... communication. I mean, with editorial, I mean, you guys now, like as soon as you guys started to edit, we were already talking and looking at rough cuts with you and uh, getting the, you guys were doing the spotting sessions um, in terms of the VFX and then always the hardest part and I know um, Pat and I were kind of back and forth on the on the open shot with the troops coming in and like how long that shot was going to be and um, as, you, know, you, as was, you were you, you you were always right it's it they no longer march in they're stuck <laughs> you know, so you were correct that it would have been it, it was going to be about the same length as the one we were giving it. But it's also too like just I mean both Pat and I as we were doing that you know you know and Kevin you were in editorial and Trey you guys were you know in it creatively but for us it's like you know we need to get the plate to work on it but we also don't want to rush you um, so that you're like sit with the film and your pacing is right and your timing's right because if there's the timing changes on any of the shots it's like almost like a re we have, kind of have to redo it. And um, so it's always that little balance of, you know, giving you guys the space and then us just like plates, we need plates. Um, so it, that's always the fun part with editorial. But yeah, your assistant editors were amazing. I, I, I can't remember his name, unfortunately, right now, but I know I was talking to him consistently throughout the process. They were both called Brian. They were yeah, both it was called Brian. Brian. I was going to say, yeah. Brian, they're Brian's. <laughs> two Brian's. 
the other Super variety. Nice. So, yes. um, you know, we were constantly doing the in and out, you know, making sure that the shots were looking good at all stages and all of that. So it's a very close relationship for sure. Here's a question from the chat. It says for the VFX team, but let's start with our two compositors here. Uh, what scene or we'll say shot are you most proud of? That's like asking me to pick my favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Ivy had some amazing tent shots. Um, there was lots to be proud of there for her, but um, I don't know the, those, we talked about them earlier, the crane shots that, that I was working on. Um, I loved them. But it was, yes, I still have some bald spots from trying to get those shots finished, but it, it was, I, an incredible learning experience and I was just so excited to, to see what the final product look, came out looking like. Um, but, you know, I mean, I was probably more impressed by the work I was seeing coming out from some of the other artists. Um, what about you, Ivy? Yeah, I I have seen lots of like other students, they got like a tent and then so many soldiers passing by and then they do lots of tons of roto. <laughs> and also I think it's challenging and also important to like communicate with other students because so many students work on different shots and then it's not only tent need to be look good in your shot, like they all need to be similar and like all the same in every shot, not like this ten looks color in other shot, the ten's color is different. So yeah, I think the important thing is like make sure everybody talk into each other and then make sure the shot is going well and just yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's, the communication is important to yeah communication and the, this kind of things. And the consistency across. You can see that it gets consistent all across. We have Adam Liu here as well, who's so appropriate. <laughs> I just asked this question, or rather the chat asked this question. Uh -huh. Adam, Adam was also uh, part of the VFX team. Did you have a favorite shot? During yeah, the, I, the shot I got is uh, remove the door. And uh, yeah, I think the... the courtroom, in the courtroom. Yeah. Yeah. The... the most important thing is the uh, communication with the uh, with the uh, classmates and with the team because we all do the same same thing. So uh, we have to share the what we uh, what the, the the map painting and the, what we do and we share that information and make the the whole thing like the same. Yeah, so I think the, the most important thing is the communication and the yeah, cooperation. And, and, and we, if I, in, those, in, those, in those shots that you did, Adam, um, I remember again in the, in the approval process at 11 o'clock at night, but Kevin, Kevin in Kansas and me in California, we would be saying one shot looks a little bit different than the other and we were trying to get that balance and it took a long time, it was tricky. But you guys did a great job of making it work. I, and I, I was going to say with those shots, you know, the the best visual effects shots are the ones you don't see. You know, you know, you did your job right when nobody notices that it was there. Right. And uh, I think those guys should be Adam, you and the others that worked on them should be very proud because there was some difficult stuff getting that to work out and, and getting them to all look the same and you know, I, I just I remember listening in dailies to the constant rounds of discussions, and it was it was impressive. Uh, here's a question from the chat. I think this is I'm going to simplify, it, but it's actually interesting to me too. Uh, Kevin, did you work with storyboards in this one or uh, in the pre-production? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you know, there were there were certain things that that um, you know, general idea, you know what I wanted them to look like, I, you know, because, um, you know, because we had to discover these sets, really, you know, to discover these locations. And, uh, and we were, you know, we were still a few locations, you know, a couple of days before we shot the scene. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and that doesn't bother me. That's, that's, that's a great kind of, that's all part of the process for me. And I kind of welcome that. 
but but you know but uh, you know when you write the script you kind of know what it looks like in your head you know and 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 that was one of the advantages for me in the film with this film I, i've known it i've known what it looks like in my head for a very long time and so when we were on the when we you know were discovering sets and finding sets and we found the great you know, air force location old air base location and and you know we we're you know we we're building things very quickly all of that was was great because i could just quickly kind of adjust the look that i was going for with the locations as they started to develop we did use storyboards that actually helped us decide not to do we That's had a different ending. We had we had storyboards for two different scenes, which yes. didn't end up yeah. even getting shot <laughs> because <laughs> right. it, was, it was terribly complicated. I remember story, going through storyboards. Yeah, which which ones story. were they again? Yeah. Uh, which ones? It was, ones? It was that, the that, one. The, the other by, ending. The other. Yeah. The other ending. Yeah. 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 There, they 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 involved more like I mean it was a big it was a big conversation between were we going to lean into uh, practical effects or, or mm -hmm. visual effects? How can we accomplish a car driving towards soldiers being shot at? Right. Like there was a lot, there was, it was very, very complicated. Um, yeah, not possible, true. but on our time, it was on the same night as two other very big important scenes. So they were very, very difficult. Um, to, to accomplish. And we knew that by storyboarding, but like once we started storyboarding and discussing the logistics of it, right. we all realized that it was gonna be nearly impossible to accomplish um, well, um, you know, given our circumstances. Um, but also the, sto I mean, storyboarding um, was I think also a little difficult on this too, because we kind of, we, we worked mostly off of a shot list, um, but sort of to my point earlier where, you know, you only saw, you know, a quarter of that of that location that we were shooting at that airfield, um, and also a lot of the reason why you don't see it is because we're we're trying to avoid it at all costs. So a lot of the shots, um, you know, not every, if if this you know this movie could have every shot could have been a visual effect shot because we were just dealing with you know. Um, a very small portion of what we could actually look at without having to to need the effects to to help it out so a lot of this a lot of the shooting of it was she was just cheating angles and cheating so that we you know half the time we're looking over you know part of the airfield that we can't actually see because it doesn't it's not part of our um or like actually cheating a full turnaround and like cheating one way and barely turning around to cheat the reverse so um it was it, and also you know the way the way that you know I I like to work and I think everyone likes to work as well is is you know there you know marks exist in, in a sense but also like the more you can get you know the talent and the performance the performances to be organic and not have to worry about hitting a mark or you know you see the you go in on the day and you rehearse it and you see what happens you kind of see how naturally the the the, the scene works out. And then you try to you try to figure out how to best accomplish that. Some scenes require a lot more um, planning, like when we're in the town and we could only see certain buildings. Like there was one building you could look at. If you turned around, you were looking at something completely different, um, modern or a completely different scene. Actually, one of our scenes, the 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 stabbing and the police station were literally right next to each other. Like if you were looking at the stabbing, you were looking right. at the police station. If you're looking at the police station, you're directly right. at the stabbing. And they're actually in each other's scenes, but you don't realize it because we had to sort of figure out how to like shoot it so you don't really recognize. It's sort of the same point as like, you know, the effects taking you out of it. Like we had to sort of cheat things, um, but also like to that point, like when we were scouting and we were there with everybody, we were standing there saying, well, we can't look that way because that's the that's the police station. We can't look that way because that's obviously like a 7-Eleven if we're looking that. So, and then it was like, well, can the, will the effects help that shot? Can, will, will a small paint out, you know, fix that? Can, will that change that? Or do we stick a hay bale in front of that thing and call it a day? And that was, you know, 
sometimes we did that and sometimes we stuck a horse in front of the thing like a uh you know a modern thing and sometimes we painted it up um so storyboards were really really difficult because we couldn't really be that specific until we were there looking at it and um so so that's sort of you know that's i mean we 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 did that we did that a lot in the second unit stuff like you had the the main the main crew over shooting and then tony and i would we're shooting some some pickup shots and then the honey wagon was in the background and so we just parked one of the old cars in front of it and then on the other side we can see you overshooting the rest of the rest of the crew so we put a bunch of horses there and just hit I would love to, have, of trying I would to, love to have a quarter for the amount of times the effects artists have to paint out the honey wagons and because yeah. <laughs> I promise I promise you every time I walk on yeah. set you are looking in the direction of where they parked the porta potty, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> promise you that. So yeah. it is about time to wrap up, but I want to ask one more question from the chat, and that is uh, pretty much it could be what you were just talking about. Um, what was the biggest logistical hurdle during production? Can you guys pick one? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, I, I, I think it was to me it was the period aspect Yeah, just yeah. always being honest to the true to the period that was the uh, some of the things that Brett just said I don't know about you what you thought that in time not yeah. enough time yeah time, time. yeah yeah you always see something and you think oh if I had more time I could redo that or do it better yes yes always yeah. that's and that's and that would be probably that would probably ring true with Trey, you know, because always wanting to, you know, there would be more takes that we'd want to do, and we wouldn't have that we'd have wouldn't have exactly the right time sometimes. You know? Well, and, and we also were, like even Trey, when we were doing you running with the horses, yeah, you yeah. know, you you said I have one in me, one more, you know, <laughs> and, and that was because of time and just the amount of energy you had to act, you know. It's, it was tough, it was stuff like that, you know. Great. No time to fret. And the heat and the humidity there just made everything yeah. like ten times more difficult. But it made it look so good, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did. Yes, it did. But it, it was no time to shoot, no time to prep, and 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 so it's the combo of all that was that was really intense. I mean, Our I mean, rough uh, time. Uh, I remember Brett, Brett with that, was, that, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pat. No, I was, I'm done. Uh, I was just reminding Brett that, 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 that last, that last night and we were doing the oh, yeah. quiet scene and, and literally, you know, we just kind of ran out of time, you know, it was like the, the sun was coming up and, and there was still a couple of shots we wanted to get, but it was just like that's all we got. So that, it's over. It's over. Yeah. That's over. It's it. Yeah, it's over. So, it's slightly, yeah, yeah, we would have kept shooting. We would have kept shooting. Yeah. It's a difficult, yeah. It's a no, difficult no yeah, it's a difficult position to be in when uh, you know the you can on those on those nights, you know, you're you definitely feel every <laughs> single second passing you by as you're shooting and you're looking yeah. at the rest of the day and what you want to get. And just, I mean, that night was definitely um, one of the hardest nights I've had. <laughs> yeah, I think set. it was. It was, it was, <laughs> it was a, it was a marathon. Uh, it was a marathon. It was a yes, it was. You know, it was, it was a sprint. You know, and, and a marathon. And, and, and it worked out. A marathon. A marathon sprinting. So yeah, it was, it was terrible. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was, it was and it was our last night, so you want to wrap the movie on like a, on a real jovial, like we accomplished this. Yeah, and and we, we were all just, exhausted. And we were exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> we were exhausted. The sun. Yeah. Was... It's, it's five in the morning, right? Yeah. 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 Totally. Uh, yeah. I remember, it was like this is it. It's over. It's like. Okay. Yeah, it just... <laughs> I mean, but I think that I think that the difficult the difficult things about this movie. Um, we're not a surprise to anybody walking into it. I think we all, we were all very aware of, of, of what we were up against. And um, it takes a story like this to, to really go 
to really believe in being able to accomplish it and looking, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, a period film of this size is, is difficult. I mean, it's, there's no, there's no question about it. Um, but you know, these stories also, these scripts don't come around all the time. Um, and when you, when you get a script like this with, um, with everybody involved, uh, it, it really, uh, it makes it totally worth it. I mean, it's very difficult. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a love hate relationship for sure, but um, <laughs> you can see that everyone's still smiling, which is a right. very good thing, except Pat sometimes I can't tell, but, uh, <laughs> no, but everyone, everyone still has a smile, you know, every, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's like camp, it's like bonding, but, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think that, you know, it, it was difficult, but, it, but definitely worth it. This is like a high school reunion. It's great. It really is. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we forget you guys, all the pain now. <laughs> you all went through this experience you're describing together. So uh, you've yeah. got this, maybe get your own kind of insignia to wear for life. Um, right. and, and, and we didn't get to do our film festival panel. So thank you oh, for this. Well, we are so happy to feature this film. It is, uh, I mean, it, in addition to our students working on it, I mean, I everyone watching this needs to know this is a film you have to keep, you know, on your shelf. Like it's something that you need to watch. It is incredible. Um, it's really speaks to not just 1917, but today. And sadly, it speaks to today, but it's true. And so uh, the performances of everyone in the film and, and Trey, especially as the lead, just takes it away. Just it's amazing. And Kevin, this is up there with all of your work. Everybody did a great job. The visual effects people did a great job. Where can people watch it? So Amazon Prime for sure. Yes. And then, um, you know, there's many different, YouTube. it can bring around, sorry. Yeah, iTunes. Um, I think Vivo. YouTube. Yeah. We posted it in the chat. We've, we've just posted it in the chat. Google we've Play. Yeah. 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 Voodoo. Voodoo. Go I'd find it. Shout out your, I want to shout out your 3D artist. They did a fantastic job. The gate to Camp Logan, the entrance to Camp Logan is outstanding, and the oil yes. derrick is outstanding. They did just fantastic work, and they did yeah. it in a short period That's of time. Jason supervising, yeah. Amazing. And I got to tell you, there's a, a little, little, little thing about the gate. There's a they, they, you know, someone uh, asked me about. There's a little sign in the actual mm -hmm. that the gate is based on, and there's this little sign in the corner of the gate. <laughs> And, and it's a sign about the uh, the court about the pandemic of nineteen seven of nineteen eighteen. Oh the, my god! It's yeah, a, it's, that, a yeah. it's a warning. It's a warning about coming on to the to the base about the pandemic of nineteen eighteen. And, oh and and they when they asked me about that, I looked at it really close, and and I don't think I would have known what it said if we weren't going through this. Wow. Right now. <laughs> wow. Wow, because it, 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 it was really hard to read, but then and then they reproduced that. So when you look at that sign, you'll see it's about the pandemic. Yeah, that was that was that was Chan who did that. Chan Wu. Yeah, that was great. Well, he Chan Chan did a fantastic job, and you guys did stuff in the again in the eleventh hour. You added uh, other elements, and I mean, it, it's really fine work. It's Thank all the more impressive, everything you guys did, considering the short amount of time and and budget and the constraints. I mean, it makes, we tell our students all the time, that forces you to be more creative. So seriously, thank you for this amazing yeah. piece of art. And and thank you to all the artists for putting your uh, creative perspective and, and contribution into it. It's amazing. And I just have to shout out to, uh, to Will, you did an amazing job um, moderating this event and um, to Becky Johnson, who's behind the scenes doing a lot of the marketing and organization for the event, Scott uh, and all the team that brought this um, Zoom session um, and the marketing team are here too, who brought this Zoom session, uh, you know, and did all this work behind the scenes. I just wanted to give them a shout out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks everybody. Much. Thank you all. It's See so you great guys. to meet all of you. Good to see you, Trey, Brett. Take care, take care. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. 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 Guys. Bye. 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 Take care, Brett. Love you guys. Bye, Tony. Love you too. Bye, Bye Catherine. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care, Jason. Bye, Thank you everything. Bye. Thank you so much, Scott.
Are you still there? I'm trying to. I'm trying to leave. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, just leave. let you know we you are. Can't leave. Leave. <laughs> You're stuck here forever. <laughs> that went well. That went well, you guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs>